This is the 2016 higher level question four, looking at developments. The question, uh, the elevation and plan of a safety guard for a garden streamer are shown. The safety guard consists of a truncated semicone A and a cylinder B, which is also truncated as shown. The 3D graphic of the guard is also shown. Part A, draw the given plan and elevation. Part B, project an end view in the direction of arrow P. Part C, draw uh, the development of the conical surface A, and part D, draw the development of the cylindrical surface B. So our end view needs to, is looking in from the left hand side, which means it's going to have to go on the right of our elevation. So we need to keep um, space on the right hand side to draw this. So I'm going to put set up my um, elevation um, to the left side of the page. Just give me enough space on the right for the end view. So I'm going to start with this and start with the plan. Um, just to give myself enough space. So it's a uh, radius, a uh, diameter of 120, radius of 60. So just going to set that up. And I'm also drawing the center circle here as well at the same time. So this is the radius for the outer part. Uh, which is based on a cone and then the cylindrical part at the top ra uh, radius 14 diameter 28 so I'm just going to darken in uh, this part of it now down on plan just so that I can see what's here and what's not so solid line running there vertically and then I have the outline for the cone, truncated cone. Now I'm going to find the same uh, piece in the elevation. Um, and that is given a height of 16 for the lower part of it. And then it continues up 40. and further uh, 20 to the center of uh, that truncation. So just this uh, point here gives us the width of where our cylinder is going to be and it also gives us the base of the cylinder which is going to join uh, diagonally down to form our cone. So we can darken in some bits here again. And our cylinder here is cut at 30 degrees up on top. So that's up 20 to the middle. So 30 degrees and then above and below. gives us, uh, completes the elevation for us. So I've got surface B, which is um, a truncated cylinder, surface A, which is the truncated cone. Now, so that uh, completes part A of this, draw the given plan, which is this, and uh, the elevation, which we've also found here as well. So this point was up 16, up 40, and then up 20 to the middle of this point here. Our 30 degree line then cuts uh, lines from the outer parts of the cylinder, giving me my top and bottom point there. Next, I need to draw the end view. So part B of this is project an end view uh, in the direction of arrow P. So arrow P looks in from the left hand side, so we're going to be drawing our end view off out to the right. So I need to project all my lines uh, over to the extreme edge of this. You can see and project it up here at our 45 degree angle. So this is the full width of the, the cone and our heights are going to be transferred from the elevation. So full width across here to the extreme edge and then up into our, with our 45 degree angle. 
Going to find the cylinder the same way. Uh, so the cylinder uh, projected across up into our end view. Now, a cylinder cut at an angle like this is going to give us um, an ellipse. So we're going to have to find that ellipse as well up here in a moment. So the widest part is going to be coming here from the center, uh, the midpoint, and then our minor axis will be determined by the height of this here. So the minor axis is going to be this distance. So from here to here, well, the major is this distance here. So just find the minor axis there as well. <coughs> so I've projected a lot of lines up here, so I'm going to just darken in a few bits to make it a bit clearer what spot. This is the outside edges on the lower piece that's 16 millimeters tall. This is that 16 millimeter ridge running around, transitioning from very wide cylinder at the bottom into the cone. And then our cone is going to run from here to this point. So running from here down, and same on the opposite side. And again, we've got um, a line there where it's changing direction. The top part of the cylinder is going to continue straight up until it gets to the widest point. And we're going to have an ellipse going across up here down around this way. Now there's two ways you can draw your ellipse. You can use the concentric circles method uh, up here, or you can um, divide up the circle down here in plan and project up the points. I'm going to divide up the, the points in plan and move them. So find those same points in the elevation and in view. So dividing this up 60 30, label the points. 1 to 12 and I need to find those corresponding 12 points up here now in the elevation. So they're going to be located directly above where they are in plan. So this is 1, this is uh, 12 and 2, 11 and 3, uh, 10 and 4 is the center point, 9 and 5, 8 and 6, and finally point 7 is the low point down here. So I can label some of those points that we have already. Uh, point 1 is going to be the top point, uh, 7 is the low point here, and uh, 10 and 4 are the white points, 10 and 4. So just taking each point now in turn. So I'm going to take 12 first. So 12 is pointed up high, across to the edge, up at our 45 degree angle, and find 12 up here. So I already have located 12, 12 comes horizontally across to meet. This gives me point 12. Do the same thing for 11. So working my way around the whole way. So 11 up at this angle, locating it, and bringing its height across. Now when I'm bringing the height for 11 across, I'm also bringing the height for um, 3 across. Uh, this is 11, 10, and for 9 I've already got that distance because it's the same distance for 11. So that gives me 9. And 8 is done the same way. 8 is already at the same distance out as 12 is. So this becomes fairly quick after the first few. Now I just need to bring up 6, which is also the same distance for 2. Six is at the same altitude as eight, same height, and two is at the same height as twelve, so I can mark that one. And the final ones now that I need to bring up are three and five across. 
Now, the reason I've done uh, this this way and dividing this up rather than drawing concentric circles is I'm going to need those points anyway later on for when I'm dividing up my um, my cylinder, so it's just easier to have them now and I'm not doubling up the, on the work. So I'm going to draw in the curve now as best I can, drawing up the points. And as I'm looking in from this side, I'm looking at looking from this side, this side is down low and it's hidden behind, so I've got hidden detail down here. So this is hidden detail. So just put in dotted lines representing that curve. Now, so that's our end view complete. So I've got the elevation, the plan, and the end view now all completed. So now we can start with the developments. So draw the development of the conical surface A. So this is A, the conical surface down here, and I need to find um, one, the length of the side of it, so from the apex of the cone down to the, the base, how long is uh, a side length, and then I need to measure how long the circumference of that is. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to measure the length of uh, the side length, and to do that I need to extend in my elevation on the side length until I find an apex of it. So that point up there, in line with the bit coming up from the center, extend that line up, that gives me the side length of um, my cone. So I can measure that side length now as it's a true length because it's going from the top point here down to this point on the side. So that's a true length. So just down off over here somewhere, I'm gonna pick a point and mark that as the top. I'm going to draw my cone around that. So conical surface is going there. So I'm just going to pick a start point and that's going to be my zero point in a minute when I'm dividing this up. So that's my start point. So what I need to do now is I need to work out how long each the, the circumference of this um, cone is. So to do that, I'm going to extend the lines that I used earlier on for my 3060. So I had points 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to extend them on until they touch the main circumference uh, down in plan. So that's going to give me, allow me to measure uh, the distances and um, find an approximate measurement for the circumference of that. So this would be point 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, using the same numbering system. So this is going to be my point 4 over here. And I'm going to measure the distance from 4 to 5. And mark that here, 4 to 5. I'm going to measure the distance from 5 to 6, which is the same distance as it was from 4 to 5. So I can mark that distance out. That's uh, 5, 6, point 0.7. 8, 9, and 10. So point 10 brings me to here. And that's most of the cone now completed. I just need to find uh, what it looks like with the top piece of it cut off, because this is not a complete cone. It doesn't come all the way up to the top. So we need to see what it looks like with this little bit of it removed. So again, we need a true length. And we have a true length line here because we're looking in perpendicular to it down here. So that's the line going from here out to seven. So here at seven. And then I'm gonna measure the distance, this point, down to the base of the cylinder. And I'm gonna swing that arc here also. So this arc is swung here. And that cuts off the top part of that cone. So now I can darken in the bits that I have left. So the base. I know the full length of that now. And the distance from here to here. And this one here also. So this area down here is the complete surface development of the conical surface A. So this is the completed part uh, C of the question, the development of the cone. So just a quick recap on what we did there. Measured, first needed to find the true length of the side of um, the cone, so how long is it from the apex down to the bottom of the cone, 
and it's this distance, so I need to extend that on up until it touches the center line. Measure that distance. That's the distance that I've used from here out to four, and swung that distance around. I then measured the circumference, I broke it up with 30, 60 degree set square, and that gave me six points uh, the whole way around here. So I counted all of them out, um, and one, so that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, point ten. And then I just needed to work out what it looks like with the top piece cut off. And again, I need a true length from the apex down to this point down here. So copy that distance down here and swung my arc. So that's uh, parts A, B, and C of this question. Final part of this question is to draw the development of the cylindrical surface B. So part B is the very top point. So that's looking at this piece up here. So we need to develop that. So thankfully, we um, when we were finding our ellipse, we already divided it up into a number of equal parts for us. And we have the heights of all of those pieces up here. So this next part is going to be quite straightforward. So I'm going to draw this off out um, on this part over here. When you're drawing this, it is always a good idea to draw it in line with the cylinder. So if this is the central axis of the cylinder, this piece here, always extend out from that perpendicular. It makes it much easier and you're not having to transfer heights. So I'm going to extend out along this way. If I had more space on this side, you could do it this side, but I have plenty of space over here for this. So I'm going to extend all of these lines across well, top point, bottom point, and I already have the rest of them brought over into this part. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to uh, mark off the sections. So I'm going to find how long this is. So how long is this entire circumference? And to do that, I'm going to start by measuring the distance from one to two, two to three, three to four, and so on. Now, when you're doing a development, it's always important that the start and end point of where it folds together are the lowest points, the shortest join. So that will be point 0.7. So this is going to be point 0.7 here. So I'm going to be measuring around from 7. So from 7 to 8, 8 to 9, and so on. So eight, uh, 7 here to 8. Checking that distance and copying that up here. So this is 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So continuing on now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now it's really important that the first, when it's a completed circumference, just like this is, the last point that you need has to be the same as the first one. So this was 8, 9, 10, 6. The last point at the moment, I've only gone from here all the way around as far as here. I'm still missing that final section. So 6 to 7. You have to go back to the first point. So whatever your number you assigned over here, you need the same number at the end also. And we can uh, just drop a light line there. So each of those lines are generators on the surface. They're lines on the surface that I can find the heights for. So the height for 7 is based on the height that it is over here in my elevation. So I can project that height across. So I already use it in uh, the end view. So 0.7 and 0.7 there. I'm going to do the same thing for 8. So 0.8, I'm going to take that height and project that across into my development. And height 8 will bring a line up to intersect point 8 there. Now 8 is also at the same height as 6. So I can mark height 6 off over here as well at the same time. To give me a point. Next one is 9. So I'm going to uh, find my line for 9. So 9 is at this height here. So I'm going to project 9 across now and into the development. And where that intersects the line for 9 here gives me the, that height. Now 9 and 5 are at the same height. So I can use that for this one over here also. So now I've got 6 points on my curve. So 10, which will also be the same as 4. And so on. So 10 and 4 are at the same height up here. That's projected across. Point 10. 
and 0.4. Continuing on, 11 and 3. I'm just going to draw the rest of them. So 11 and 3, the height from 11 and 3 is brought from uh, the elevation or end view. Right, 11 and 3, 12 and 2. So this is why it's really important that you label all of the points so that you can follow them and one then is at the very top. So now we've got plotted all the points on our curve. Now it's just a matter of joining all of these points up. Find the best curve that you can. And coming back down here to the point seven at the end. Final part we need to do is just darken in the out line of this and that will complete it. We don't darken in lines in the middle and there are no fold lines on it as uh, it's, a, it's a circle so these are not fold lines they're just generator lines so that completes this question. So just a quick recap on what we did there. Divided the cylinder up into 12 parts which we used for our elliptical curve here. Marked out those 12 sections and then took the heights belonging to each line from the elevation. So line eight, so point eight, how high that is, is determined from here up to here. So we brought our line across to intersect, same for nine, 10, 11, and so on. Joined up all the points to form the curve. And this completes the 2016 higher level question four.